And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We hear in the last words of Matthew this morning, and remember, remember all that you've heard, remember the stories, the healing, parables, the sacraments, all that you've heard. And at the end, remember that I am with you until the end of the age. And so this Sunday, we have in the Episcopal Church and other um, liturgical churches, what we call Holy Trinity Sunday. And I bet you have all spent all week thinking about that. Um, and yet, what it is, one of the things that I think often I find myself as I prepare to preach on this Sunday is asking myself the question, why does this matter to me? You know, some of us that like to study all these things, that's one thing. But how does it matter to you? And to you? And to you? Ultimately, it matters because it's God's promise to us to be with you always to the end of time. Ultimately, it's God's way of making sure that we can find a way in, that we can find a way to connect to God. No matter where we are in our life, no matter who we are, how is it that we can find that portal in? We're reminded that in our church, our doctrine tells us that we believe and we pray it all the time, and I bet many of us say it and don't even think about it. But you know, we pray to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And for some people, that language is hard because of their history, because of our history, because of life. But what we know is that God gets to come to us in different ways. God is all-encompassing. For some of you, God might be in the mountains, or it might be out in the fields, or it, it might be in the ocean. But God is all-encompassing and doesn't need to, nor could possibly be confined to one place, or one religion, or one group. We have Jesus. We have human beings. We have Jesus because we many believe, and I would be in this bandwagon, is that God knew that we needed a human person to follow. We needed some way to wrap our mind around what this whole thing meant. And that for us as human beings, the best way to do that is by having something like us that we could identify. And we have Jesus, and the story, and the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And then we also have the Holy Spirit, because we have to be reminded that God, A, is with us always, but back to that thing about not being able to fit into a word, or one instance, one thing. When I see my way thinking about that, how does that possibly matter to you? And Rene is a new book, Marion Buddy, who is the uh, Bishop of Washington, D.C. Some of you may have seen her. She often does things at the Washington National Cathedral. She just wrote a book, and it's called How We Learn to Be Brave. And it's some of her own story, it's scripture, it's stories of history, it's all kind of wonderful things. And in one of the stories that I read this week, she started off and she left a conference, like many of us in the church, uh, as, as leaders in the church, she's walking and she had this young uh, person with her, and she'd been at this conference all day and she just was like, what, how does this matter? Well, in meetings like that, no matter what your career choice is. There's this, or that feeling often of, of her walking down the road and going, I love the church, but why does it matter? Like, how can I possibly make this 
matter to people. When I look and this young person who was in her early 30s had been a person that had struggled much of her life. She had tried to take her life a couple of times and then finally needed to come out as a person, uh, as a gay person and had been since in the last 10 years in the church had been very active in the Episcopal Church and she looked at Marion and said, if we have to be here. We have to be here because when I came in, people told me that God loved me. That's why. And I hope different ones of you have that story. It's not about being gay. It's about loving the other as a human being, as a beloved child of God. It's about seeing the other person. <clears throat> and in the story she writes, she goes, now I get it. We need to make sure that the beloved community of God is here for all of us. Whatever our story is, whatever it is that God is challenging us with, or whatever way we feel outside, whatever way we feel less than or not good enough, whatever it is, we need to hear that cry of that young woman be our cry. We need to be here so the doors are open for whoever needs God's love. It's important. The gospel this morning, the messages this morning, are less about God as we usually preach, we usually teach and listen and pray with the stories about God and Jesus. This morning, it is more about us. It is more about how it is this matters to us. Yesterday, thank you to all of you that were bustling around, cleaning and doing things and you know what I do? I chat. <laughs> and I get away with it because I'm a director. Right? So I walk around and I chat with people because I'm always thinking, geez, I'd love to have a conversation. And I get to have conversations. And I had one pressure say to me, you know, I don't know uh, how we're going to do this. And I'm just thinking, you know, maybe one of my grandchildren might want to come to church sometime. And I'm like, awesome. She's like, but I'm not really going to push it. I just want to know, you know, like, I'm just hoping. I'm like, yes, we are here. We are here for an after soccer practice. We are here on any time that we can continue to find ways to be open. And over and over again yesterday, I heard from people say, I, I wish people could understand what this family means to me. I wish my kids understood what this place means to me. That's not necessarily why we come and I'm here and I make sure all the hymns are about mission. And we need to be able to care for each other and care for those in our midst that we are called to care for. But why does this matter? It matters because you all got up, came out, got out of bed, had all kinds of choices. You could have gone up for brunch. You could have gone to bending yoga, even if you don't think you can go through yoga. You could have done all kinds of things this morning. And yet something has you here. Because I am with you until the end of time, we hear God say those God moments. Like that young woman walking into the church, finding out that God loved her after all, and that there was a place for her here. That is our work this morning to wonder and to hold up and to celebrate the fact that we are able to name the fact that whether it is God we pray for it, I ask you, because I'm just going to dream that you're going to be thinking about this all afternoon, I'm going to ask you to wonder, when you pray, do you pray to God? Or 
Or maybe you feel more comfortable talking to Jesus. Or maybe the Holy Spirit's easier because it just is less complicated. God is so glad you're praying. God is so glad that you are aware that there's something outside of yourself that you are not alone, no matter where you are on your path. Whether you're a person that is grieving because you've lost someone you love, God is with you. If you are in a job that feels so hard, your skin hurts, God is with you. If you feel lost and don't believe this silly preacher, God is with you. This year I had a parishioner, as again, I was having a conversation yesterday, and we had a parishioner that uh, passed this year. And uh, was very beloved, and I spent a lot of time with the family, who the son and daughter-in-law do not live in town, they live far away. And as all good children, is it good children, what does that mean? They were worried about their mother. What is the matter? Is she going to be okay? We're going to leave without you. And I kept saying to them, it's, it's going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to keep an eye on it. Well, I know, but so I, I, so we will let you know. And they wanted that to be true. And we went through the process and we had a big service here. And we were standing in Urban Hall. Video show was up on the screen. The place was full. Standing back with Andrew and Jen. We're looking out over, and I said, she's going to be okay. And they're looking, all of you, and the theater community. They're looking at the people that love Kinga, and they realized that she was going to be okay. They looked at me, and they said, now we know. Now we got what we know. Now, would Tinka like to tell you that they are now going to church regularly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she would. Like, I bet there are many grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles and, you know, me, my kids. We'd all, but you know what we know? Why does it matter to us? Because we never know, first of all, when we can be that loving body of God. Because none of us did that for that, those two kids. We all gather, that's what we do. We feed the other, because that's what we do. If we believe that in the reading of Genesis this morning that we are created in God's image, that means we are all created in God's image. The people we like, the people we don't like, the people we look like, the people we don't look like. We are all created in God's image. We live in a time right now where it is so much easier to be divided than it is to be together. We live in a time right now where racism and sexism and homophobia and isms of every kind. And yet what we know is all that is is unadulterated fear. Pure and simple. At the core, all those isms are and we hear this morning that God is with us no matter what. And so why does it matter to us? It matters to us because this is our way of making meaning of that. This is our way of being in liturgy. It's our way of praying. It's our way of loving each other and surrounding each other in love when we don't feel lovable and we don't even love the other. It's how we gather. It matters. It 
because we hear those words in the back of our mind, I am with you always, wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you came from, and whether it is God, whether it is Jesus, whether it is the Holy Spirit, whether it is Mary or Miriam or Sarah, that you pray to, God is 